Hey guys, welcome to Agent Development. This week I want to talk about how you can shoot your own high quality listing videos using a smartphone. All right, let's go over a few pro tips. Uh, number one, make sure that uh, your phone's camera is set to shoot at 60 frames per second. Most of the latest cell phones are capable of shooting 60 frames per second at a 4K resolution because you're going to want to slow down the footage by about 50% once you move the footage into your editing software. That's how videographers are able to get that smooth look uh, that you see in all of the professional listing videos. Uh, second pro tip, you're going to want to make sure that every single light in the home is turned on. If there's a gas fireplace, make sure that's turned on. If there is a TV in the room that's like a main focal point, say it's above a fireplace or it's kind of right in the center of a room, sometimes if, uh, if I have that and the homeowner has Netflix, I will turn on like a classic movie that everyone has seen and that typically looks pretty good in the video. And then the last pro tip here is I would plan shooting the video during the same window as the photographer is coming. Now you don't want to obviously get in the photographer's way. However, if you have given your client a photography checklist, a lot of times you can show up during that window, you can stay out of the photographer's way, and the home is ready to be shot, and this is a lot more convenient for your client. All right, let's head out to the property for a quick demonstration. I will show you guys how I shoot these videos. I have my gimbal, it's a DJI Osmo Mobile 3. I have my cell phone, it's a iPhone 11 Pro. You do not need the Pro version. The wide angle lens does help. Uh, and they do have that on the regular iPhone 11 or you can use an Android phone. Most of them also have wide angle lenses. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the gimbal. Squeeze it in there. And I press the button twice. It will fire up. It's now in portrait mode, so I gotta go ahead and press the button twice more. And there we go. Now what I like to do is I like to go ahead and use the standard iPhone app to film the video, that's how I do it. I also will put it in uh, wide angle mode. However, I will usually crop in just a little bit because the standard wide angle is 13 millimeters. That's a little bit too wide for my liking. Go ahead and turn this one on. Oh, so, so now I have every single light in the house on. I also have the fireplace on. Um, I also have the television on to a very neutral channel. I got HGTV on. I kind of want to get behind this wall and I'm just going to do a reveal shot of this room. And again, I'm kind of doing a ninja walk to make sure that the, make sure that the fireplace TV stays in the center of my frame. So that's one gimbal movement that I'll, I'll do. When I get into rooms like this where there's a lot of natural light, one thing I'll do is I'll make sure that I expose for the outside. If you don't, if you try to expose for the inside, what happens is the windows look blown out. It looks like there's a spaceship landing outside the house. So what I'll do is I'll expose for the outside and then you can actually tap and hold and it will lock that exposure on, a, on an iPhone. Another gimbal movement I like to do is where you kind of pan up. So you walk closer and you pan up. Um, you start out kind of looking at the ceiling and then as you're panning you reveal the rest of the room. So for the most part you want to be walking forward when you're going through a house because it puts off the feel that you're actually walking through the house to the consumer or your audience who's watching the video. But sometimes it's good to add those types of gimbal movements because it keeps the video a little bit more entertaining and it gives you a better shot of people actually finishing the video. All right guys, I'm outside in front of the house now. I'm just gonna show you guys how I would typically do this on a cell phone. I have my gimbal on top of a tripod and all I had to do was unscrew the handle from the gimbal that comes with the gimbal and the screw it onto the tripod is pretty basic. So now I'm inside the software for the gimbal. Um, it's a DJI. Uh, software. Just gonna draw a basic square over my face and now it's going to actively track where I go. Kind of puts off the illusion that I have a cameraman. So I'm gonna press play and I'm just gonna quickly talk about the house. Hey welcome to my new listing at 123 Main Street. At just over 4,000 square feet this home features five bedrooms, four bathrooms, we have a gourmet kitchen. 
with shaker cabinets and quartz countertops. We have hardwood floors throughout the main level. Upstairs, we have a master suite with large walk-in shower. Downstairs is completely finished with a wet bar and the home has great outdoor space. Let's head inside and take a look. All right, a couple shots I would get outside is I would switch back to the basic uh, iPhone wide angle lens and then I would get a reveal shot here in the front of the house. So I would come right up to whatever there is here. Usually there's pillars, sometimes there's plants, things like that. I would get really close to the uh, pillar, make sure that I'm all lined up and then I would just go this way to reveal the door. I'd also do that on the inside of the house for a few things. Like if I wanted to highlight some small details of the house, I would switch back to the typical iPhone wide angle lens and I would highlight the uh, small details in the house. Another shot that I would get out here is I would just get a basic reveal shot of the actual house itself. So maybe pushing forward and then panning up at the same time to get that basic shot of the house. Another one I might do is I might just do one where I kind of pan sideways like this. All right, guys, there you have it. That's how you shoot a house on nothing but a gimbal and a cell phone. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I wanted to mention if you don't have a newer phone, you can buy a third party wide angle lens. Uh, I have noticed that the standard focal length on an iPhone is higher quality than the wide angle lens provided. Uh, when switching back and forth, you will notice a little bit more grain when using the wide angle lens on an iPhone. Uh, I also wanted to point out that your listening video should only be like one to two minutes tops. I have attempted longer videos and I've noticed more engagement on the shorter videos. So you don't need to show the entire house. The video is meant to be more of uh, like a movie trailer for the home uh, that you post on social media to get a prospective buyer to want to call and book a showing. All right, guys, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's take a look at what a final edit might look like. Hey, welcome to my new listing at 123 Main Street. At just over 4,000 square feet, this home features five bedrooms, four bathrooms. We have a gourmet kitchen with shaker cabinets and quartz countertops. We have hardwood floors throughout the main level. Upstairs, we have a master suite with large walk-in shower. Downstairs is completely finished with a wet bar and the home has great outdoor space. Let's head inside and take a look. There you have it guys. Decent quality video coming straight from my iPhone. Uh, you can do this with an Android phone. Most of them have wide angle lenses as well. I know this isn't for everyone uh, and this isn't for every listing. Some higher end listings will require that you hire an actual real videographer to shoot the video. At the time of this video, I'm seeing these types of video walkthroughs costing roughly $500 to $1,000 depending on your market. Professional listing videos are not in the budget for all listings. However, they are becoming very common. When I started selling real estate toward the end of 2007, professional photography wasn't something that was commonly used on every listing. Now, if you're not hiring a professional photographer, you are not hitting par. It's my opinion that videos are starting to become the same way, and this is an inexpensive way that you can get started and your clients will not be disappointed. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions for me. Be sure to watch my video on how to edit a real estate video using Adobe Premiere Rush. And last but not least, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you can be notified as soon as we post a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon.